If you want to understand diabetes, the first step is to understand what insulin is and how it works to control the blood sugar level in our bodies. So who's ready for a molecular biology lesson? Anybody? Nobody? Welcome to Sugar High Guys, I'm P.A. David, your glycosylated guide, and today we are making insulin easy to understand. By the end of this video, you're going to be an insulin pro, and you won't even have to take notes. All right, first things first, you need sugar. Glucose is your body's favorite source of energy. Your body runs on glucose like your car runs on gas. Yeah, yeah, I know. If you have an electric car, you don't need gas, but you get me, right? Glucose absorbs from your food into your bloodstream so that it can travel to every part of your body. Your blood vessels are like a highway and all the chemicals that we need get delivered as the blood flows and circulates. Your body cells want that glucose inside so they can break it apart and get the energy out of it. Think of it like Amazon trucks driving on the road to deliver packages to your house. Glucose is the package and your house is the cell. But the Amazon delivery person doesn't break into your house and bring the package inside. They just leave it on the doorstep. It has to still get in somehow. And glucose is the same way. It can only get into the house or the cell through the front door. And that door is locked. Lucky for us, we have the key. And insulin is that key. Okay, okay, I know the whole insulin is the key that unlocks the door analogy gets used all the time and it's tired and it's overused, but it works. That's one of the easiest ways to understand the most basic role of insulin and one of the simplest ways of describing how diabetes works. Diabetes is what happens when something in that whole lock and key system breaks and the door doesn't open. Okay, insulin is a hormone that gets produced by your pancreas, which is this pretty weird looking organ right in the middle of your abdomen below your ribs. In addition to insulin, your pancreas also makes a hormone called glucagon, which has the opposite job, raises the sugar levels, as well as some other enzymes that help us to digest our food. There's this specific type of cell in your pancreas called a beta cell that's in charge of making insulin. Once insulin gets released from your pancreas, it only lasts like five to 10 minutes in your blood, which is good because that allows your pancreas to adjust the amount of insulin on pretty short notice and manage when blood glucose levels change throughout the day. Your pancreas makes a steady amount of insulin all day long so that it can keep your sugar level at a normal baseline. Now, since this is a baseline trickle of insulin, we call that the basal rate. But when you eat something, your food absorbs and this extra rush of glucose starts flooding in, so your pancreas has to squirt out an extra bit of insulin to cover for this bit of sugar and bring it back down to baseline. Once the meal has been managed, the pancreas backs off and goes back to releasing its normal basal rate. If you've ever seen someone give injections of insulin, you might have noticed that insulin doses try to follow this same pattern. Some insulins are injected just once a day and last all day as that basal insulin. Some insulins are faster and shorter and get injected just before eating in order to cover for the meal, just like your pancreas otherwise would. But remember how we described insulin like a key that opens a lock? Well, it turns out that insulin actually has more responsibilities than just that. There's a bunch of different parts of your body that help control your sugar. And insulin's effect on each one of those is to modify it in whatever way would lower your glucose. Like for example, remember when we were talking about the other hormones that the pancreas makes, and I mentioned that there's this guy called glucagon and he raises your sugar? Well, guess what insulin does? Insulin blocks glucagon from getting released so that it can't raise your glucose level. There's also several ways that your body stores sugar for later, kind of like a bank account. And there's even different kinds of bank accounts in your body. Like you may have a savings account, but you may also have a retirement account and those store money in different ways. If you think of glucose in your blood like money in your hand, 
Insulin basically wants to get the money out of your hand and do something with it. Anything. Just get it out of my hand. Either spend it or save it. Spend it by letting it into the muscles and burning it up or save it by funneling it into one of our savings accounts. The quick and easy savings account is in the bank of your liver. Your liver stores sugar inside it in the form of this thing called glycogen, which is really just long chains of glucose strung together like pearls on a string. In reality, it branches off in tons of different directions, but just think of it like pearls on a string where each pearl is a molecule of glucose. If you need that glucose, you can tap into that bank account and start unlinking pearls from the string, and that leaves you with a bunch of glucose that's ready to be used. You can also store the energy from glucose in your retirement account, which is called fat. Glucose is used in the formation of fat molecules. We don't spend that money as quickly as we spend the glycogen in our liver, but if we need to, it's there, and breaking down fat produces molecules of sugar. And if we've absolutely tapped out all our savings and we still need a dollar, we can hawk our belongings by selling off our proteins. Yep, even proteins can be broken down and converted into glucose if you really need it. The effect of insulin is to block all of these glucose storing bank accounts from getting tapped into and it even promotes depositing that sugar into each one. It blocks glycogen breakdown. It blocks fat breakdown. It blocks protein breakdown. So I'm hoping that by now, insulin is starting to seem really helpful and like a good thing. And the reason that I bring that up is because I want you to look at insulin as your friend. Insulin is a good thing. It belongs in our body, so we shouldn't be afraid of it. Sometimes we need to use insulin to control diabetes and insulin has kind of gotten a bad rap. In my practice, I've seen that a lot of people are really afraid of starting insulin, even beyond just the idea of giving themselves an injection. Um, insulin sort of has this stigma as being the symbol of the beginning of the end to a lot of people. And, and a bunch of people have told me that they really don't want to go on insulin because they're worried that it might cause dialysis or blindness or, or cause them to die earlier. And these feelings are usually based on some sort of personal experience where they saw a family member get put on insulin and then in the years that followed, things didn't really go that well. Sometimes the natural inclination is to conflate the two, to connect the two and assume that there's this cause and effect relationship, like as though the insulin caused the kidney failure and made the person go on dialysis. Guys, it, it doesn't work that way. Insulin doesn't cause kidney failure. Insulin doesn't cause blindness. Diabetes causes those things. And if we can keep a good handle on blood glucose levels, we can often prevent those things from happening in the first place. Now I'll admit that as healthcare providers, we're sometimes guilty of waiting way too long to start insulin in people who needed it. Quite often, if we would have not been so afraid to have the conversation with a patient that it might be the right time to start insulin, we might have been able to get better control earlier on and things might have gone differently. Now, I'm not saying that if your family member went on dialysis that their doctor was bad or guilty of malpractice. I just really want to dispel some of the myths that I see so commonly that keep people from jumping on opportunities that might have freed them from the very things that they were afraid of. So that's how insulin works. What do you think? Does it make more sense now? Question of the day, would you be willing to try insulin if it was the best option for you? And for those of you who have tried insulin, what were your experiences? Which ones have you liked? Which ones have you hated? There's no right or wrong answer here. Tell me your honest thoughts because I'd love to hear what your actual experiences have been. Let's connect in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe and click notifications so that you can be the first to know about new videos as they come out. Looking forward to talking to you again soon on the next Sugar High.